Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. Oh, my. She just put the medal on. She's stunning in the studio. Oh, right she's got both medals on. How, glo- how glorious. All right. Joining us in studio, Carl Dukes, Cordell Stewart, Alana Myers of Douglasville. Now, you know what? I'm going to stand up and give you a standing ovation. Yes. Because yes. we're proud of you. Congratulations. Uh, she is. Thank you. Well, I tell you what. And, and I gotta be honest with you. Grab them, Carl. I want to put I got, my hands oh, on. Oh, they're they're very heavy too. I, I remember holding. Anything. I remember holding the summer Olympic medals. This is the only. This is as close as I'll ever get to these wow. Olympic medals. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, I be. I will be honest with you. This is my daughter's favorite event. Awesome. She knows yes. nothing about bobsledding. <laughs> she just thinks it's the coolest thing. Now you got to remember, and I know you were gone, but it snowed twice in a, in a, a period of a month here. Mm-hmm. And for her, she was outside. You hear that? That's the that's the bronze and the silver. And that's not the bell ringing. Oh, either. how sweet is that? All right, here you go, Cordell. Hold on, take your time while you hand it to me. Oh no, no, I, yeah, don't drop them. And so she was fascinated by the bobsledding. And so we found ourselves trying to at night, you know, with, with the tape delays and whatnot, trying to find the bobsled. So I actually got a chance to watch. Your event, awesome, and, and saw you win. Um, and I was talking with, with some folks out in, in the bullpen, what we call where we all talk out there. And I said, "Well, how much of the, the Winter Olympics did you guys watch?" And it was sparingly, but some events, you know, got people's attention. Talk about the experience. I mean, you know, I, obviously, I was big on the opening ceremonies. We talked about it. What was it like? Was it as bad as people say over there with all the you know the hotel rooms not being done, stray dogs, yada yada yada, or was your experience? extremely completely different than that I, it was extremely completely different because they keep the athletes kind of isolated so we come back and say good things about it you know um, the biggest problem I had is a lot of people didn't speak English but I speak a little Russian so that was about it um, you know we didn't have the water problems we didn't have the hotel problems um, one of my teammates got stuck in the bathroom but other than that we were good wow okay well uh, listen we're talking with Alana Myers of Douglasville Olympic bobsledding silver medalist she also got a bronze medal uh, she's a graduate of George Washington University, where she was a member of the softball team. I, I, when we come back, because I got a lot of questions for you. I know you were stuck yeah. in traffic in Atlanta. Imagine that. So we're going to come back. I got a lot of questions, including how you go from softball to bobsledding, all right, <laughs> and then training for yeah. the event and whatnot. We, we got some good stuff coming back here. All right, Alana Myers in studio with us. Stay tuned. We're going to come back and get into the mind of an Olympian. What are you doing with those medals, Cordell? I'm, I'm, I'm engulfed into them right now. This is special. I'm not going to lie to you. The bronze looks kind of cool. Yeah. It's, it's different. The bronze looks completely different. We're going to take a picture. We'll tweet it out on our website at 92.9 The Game, and we'll tweet it out at our Game Time 92.9 wow. <laughs> Twitter as well. And our Facebook as our, what do you call him? What do you call Rob? That's our web guy. Our web yeah. Guy. Our digital content manager is in here telling me web we're going to put it on our Facebook too. All right. We'll do that so you can check it out online. All right. We're coming back. Carl Dukes, Cordell Stewart. It's Game Time. Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. We are happy to be in the presence of a silver and bronze medalist from Douglasville. Alana Myers is in studio with us here on Game Time. Carl Dukes, Cordell Stewart. And we're talking with her. We're talking in the break. We got a chance to meet her her dad who was over and so she's supporting her as well. It's funny because dad was like, yeah, it was great. It was great. It was great. Hotels weren't that great. (laughs) (laughs) All right. um, Here's the deal. This is what I want to know because you were a softball player. As I mentioned, you went to George Washington University. So when, at what point did it, you become interested in bobsledding. How does that happen? Well, my parents saw it in 2002, but at the time I was training to be a softball player and I thought I was going to make the Olympic team in softball. Um, didn't end up happening for me. I played professionally, but just wasn't going to make that next level. So um, needed something else to fulfill this Olympic dream of mine. So after my parents saw it in 2007, I retired from softball and they said, you should try this. So I emailed a coach and they invited me up to Lake Placid, New York. Wow. All right. So you had no training. No. You, you had never done it. I watch Cool Runnings, so it's cool. It's a cool movie, right? I think that's what everybody knows bobsled from, uh, but we don't sit in bathtubs. Yeah, right, exactly. No, it's it's a great movie, and it's funny because that was part of our trivia a few weeks ago. We were laughing because when we did an Olympic deal, uh, Olympic trivia. So you go to Lake Placid. What happens? At what point did you go? This is for me, or at any point did you go? I don't know. I go to Lake Placid, and basically um, how we start athletes off is you throw them right in and you test them like physically, like the NFL Combine. We do the same type of combine, and then you see where you are athletically, and then they tell you whether or not you're fit for bobsled. And then after that, they just kind of throw you in sled and let you go. 
<laughs> and that's what they did. And that's what they did. <sighs> well, Alana, when you when you when you when you watch it, it's basically like a ice track in a sense of how runners do, and they run on actually a track outside. How do you guys prepare for our listeners? How do you prepare for an event that seems as if you can only do it during the Olympics time? So every year we have eight World Cups and we have a World Championship. So every year we're prepping and doing everything we need to to learn how to drive better, to learn how to push faster. But our on ice push, um, the actual first 50 meters is the most important part of the race. Mm -hmm. And that's where you need athletes who are big, strong and fast. So most of our time is spent getting as powerful as possible to push that sled. So your workouts are similar to... Football players with power cleans, snatches, jerks, yep, hand our, cleans. Our workouts are exactly like football players and track and field athletes. Um, I train with a lot of them down in Arizona and also here. Um, Billy White, who's Johnson, used to coach Billy me. White, so, um, you know, a lot of football. And we actually have a lot of football and track athletes come out for our sport. Mm-hmm. Now, you're the first woman, I guess, um, or first time women's bobsled medalist at the Olympics. Is that correct? I am the first woman to win uh, a medal as a driver and a brakeman. Yes. And the first woman, the U.S. woman, to win two bobsled medals. Yeah, that's it's it's, it's impressive. I mean, you know, and I was I was amazed at the high tech sleds. Now, you know, as I said, it snowed a couple of times here, and a lot of folks were you know sledding down hills <laughs> here in Atlanta. But this is nothing like that. Talk about the uniforms um, that you guys wore, and and certainly the sleds because. They're so aerodynamic and the engineering that goes into those. Mm -hmm. So our sport is all about aerodynamics. So when you watch bobsled and you see the Jamaicas, you see the Brazils, um, unfortunately they're out of the race before it even starts just because they don't have the technology we do. Um, And that's something very few people know. And our sport, it comes down to the hundredth of a second. So our suits are designed by Under Armour. They're like bathing suits with arms, very sleek, very aerodynamic. And then our sleds are designed by BMW. And they have put in so many resources to make these the fastest sleds on earth. And they really are. Wow. Mm-hmm. She's talking about the ultimate driving machine. Which says <laughs> yeah, BMW, exactly. Basically. But when you talk about steering, mm-hmm. can you give us a, a, a visual mentally for those listeners who can't see? Uh, how are you steering? Because I thought mm-hmm. when I watch you guys running, you jump in and, and, and the person in the back ducks their heads down and you're sitting forward. It's like you're holding on for dear life. What, what do you how do you steer? So um, when we sit in the sled, there's two rings in the shape of D's. We hold a straight part of D's, and what happens is they attach to the front of the sled to like a pulley system, and that moves our runners, which are our blades, left and right. So if you pull your left D-ring left, it'll turn the sled left. If you pull it, your right one, it'll turn the sled right. So mm-hmm. it's just a kind of back-and-forth motion. Gotcha. The tricky thing, though, is sometimes our steers are so little, you're just opening and closing your hand. Mm, little wow. movement inside of that sled. Little movement, and little movement goes a long way. It's the same as like a car. It's just, you know, when you start turning the wheel, if you really want to make a good turn, you turn your wheel all the way. If you want to make a little turn, you're just doing slight adjustments. Alana Myers in studio with us here on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. She's uh, from Douglasville and is a uh, medalist uh, at the Sochi Winter Olympics, silver and bronze medalist. She also won a bronze medal at the t- um, 2010 Games in Vancouver, um, which is impressive. Now, do you want to compete in the next Winter Olympic Games? Yes, I was a tenth of a second out of gold. Uh, so when you come that close, a tenth of a second, you got to keep going. So, gonna, more, so more power cleans. More power cleans. Eesh. I can't stand power <laughs> cleans, but we got more ahead. Uh, well, you know what? And and where do we know? Yes, we know where the the next Winter Olympics going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm thinking about Rio Summer Olympics. Um, so, Korea is yep. where it's going to be. I'm thinking Rio Summer Olympics 2016. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I tell you what, I uh, as I mentioned, I told you we watched a little bit of, uh, well, we watched you metal, but we watched a lot of bobsledding because, like I said, my daughter thought it was cool. And the thing I don't know if, if people are aware of is how much does the start play into, you know, jumping into the sled and getting the speed up? How big of a deal is that? Because it seems like everybody's running so hard and, and trying to get that great start. How, how much does that play in? The start is the only time we can actually accelerate the sled. So every other time we're putting input to the sled, every time you drive, it actually slows the sled down because it creates friction. So that start is super important. That's why we called out Lauren Williams, who's a track and field medalist, Olympic medalist, and Lolo Jones, track and field superstar. Mm. We needed those fast girls behind us to have the fastest pushes in the world. World. What's the reception been like? I mean, how long have you been back now? <laughs> I've been back a couple of days, and it's been incredible. Um, everywhere I go now, I get recognized, which is so weird coming from a sport like bobsled, where you know a lot of people don't know it exists until the Olympics come around or until you see an episode of Cool Runnings again. Uh, but it's been incredible, and the city has really gotten behind me. You mentioned uh, Lolo Jones. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, obviously, she's a hurdler. We know she, she's pretty fast. Getting a bobsled, how was that being with her uh, and seeing this is her first opportunity and chance to actually be a part of that team? It was incredible. Um, I, I don't think Lolo gets enough credit uh, for how great of an athlete she really is. She really took to bobsled. And, you know, there's a lot from hurdles that actually transfers to bobsled because it's you got to get out of the blocks very quickly. you got to get up and running very quickly. So she was able to take to the sport really well. And I didn't know – uh, a lot about track and field athletes because I'd never done what, never been in track and field really. But her and Lauren Williams took to team sports like none other. They've worked so hard to be on this team and to be there for us. Mm-hmm. Olympic Village. There were sto- <laughs> why <are> you laughing? <laughs> there were <laughs> stories out, Alana, about what was going on at the Olympic Village What's and how. Going on? Let's just say festive it was at the Olympic <laughs> Village. So much so, um, I saw a story about uh, people using the app. What's the app that we were talking about, guys? You remember the app that we were talking about that that allows you to find people who you may be interested in? Tinder. Thank you. Oh, did you know? Yeah, I knew. Were you on Tinder? <laughs> no, I'm not on Tinder. <laughs> I'm engaged. So, um, well, tell us about the Olympic. Is it is it crazy? You know. Um, It is a little crazy. You've got a lot of different countries, a lot of different people intermixing. And in Sochi, um, in particular, we were kind of isolated, so there wasn't much going out into the town or anything. So there's, I met people from all over the world. Um, I wasn't on Tender. I'm engaged, so uh, I'm not doing (laughs) anything. Just clean that up right now. Real quick. She's like, I'm back, honey. I wasn't wasn't even in the Olympic village. Like like Shaggy said, it wasn't me. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Alana, you you, you talk about uh, great athletes and everyone. Your dad. He's an athlete. He played with Jamie Dukes yeah. on here on our station with the Falcons. Yep. How was that experience Falcons. for you? Um, you know, growing up in Atlanta and being able to go over, I guess they were in uh, Swanee at the time, mm-hmm. and I remember watching him practice and being there in the gym and, you know, eating McDonald's and playing with Freddie's Falcon too. But just having that kind of role model from a very young age, like it inspires you to whatever you choose to do, to do it at a high level. Daddy was a good power cleaner too? Uh, no, actually. I think that's hereditary. <laughs> power cleans do not run in my family. No, they're not normal. <laughs> For anyone, no. I hate them. Well, I, you know what? It did, how much did it help having a dad that played? You know, um, and, and being around sports is that what made you fall in love? Uh, your first love with sports, or were you always athletic? I mean, how did it play out for you as a kid? You know, it's funny. I have two sisters, and um, you know, they played sports growing up, but they never developed the same kind of passion I have for sports. So, um, my dad was definitely a huge influence, but at the same time, my mom was a huge influence, and I just had so much fun being physically active, and I love playing any kind of sports. So that's really where it stemmed from. Mm. A lot of Myers here in studio with us on Game Time. We're going to have some fun with her. Uh, Stick around. we got a a fun thing we're going to do with her coming up in about four or five minutes here on Game Time. As far as the friction with the team. Now, this is you're training every day. You're around these ladies. You you know, you start knowing everybody's secrets. Mm -hmm. How tough was it? As far as the, you know, compatibility and and getting along with everybody. Because my guess is, you know, all that training time and spending time together, somebody got on your nerves. Oh, you spend a lot of time together. And we were over in Europe since December 27th and didn't come home until February 22nd for me. Why why so early? uh, We have our World Cup. So we had races over in Europe before then. And um, they announced our Olympic team over there. So we never had a chance to come home. So you can imagine tensions kind of get riled up and we had um five girls six girls on our tour and we narrowed it down to three so there's a couple different selection processes we had to go to and yeah things got intense but wow yeah. you didn't have any beef with anybody no i'm huh i'm just asking i'm good i'm good you're good no, I, i'm kind of huh i'm kind of the mediator of it all so, so you, were, you were getting everybody to get along yeah have you looked I, at her arms and shoulders oh i saw them yeah, everybody well, she, messing with her yeah <laughs> she she is uh she she's strong as they say Very. so um so who was beefing with lolo <laughs> you know, actually, Lolo doesn't have much beef within the team. Like, we all love her. I think a lot of her beef comes from the outside world and, you know, the attention she attracts. She att- attracts a lot of attention, yes, but she she's a great athlete, and I think it brings a great amount of attention to our sport. So I'm all for it. Our teammates are all for it. I think some other people outside, or um, whether it's on the men's side or within other countries, really don't like her because of that. But I think it's But great. she's not shy, though. No, she's I think not that's at all. what it really what it is. She's not shy. And you get on a nerves enough, she'll tell you. I don't know why people are tripping on Lolo, though, honestly. I mean, what what's the big deal? Yeah, I, she's, she's good. She, she hasn't said anything, in my opinion, Opinion that that really would get people upset. Now, maybe she's been in the media enough where you start to go, oh, God, I wish she'd go away. 
but that's what it is, right? Right. The right. media chooses their heroes, and you know if they're gonna if they're gonna choose her, then you know she's great for bobsled. All right, we're going to come back. Uh, we're going to do something special with our Olympic medalist here in studio when we return on Sports Radio 92.9 again. Carl and Cordell, we're in studio with Olympic medalist Alana Myers here from Douglasville. Very exciting to hold those medals. We took a couple of snapshots, and I'm thinking, yeah, this is as close as I'll get uh, to, to ever winning a medal. What was it like to be on the uh, the podium there when, you when you know, the, the award – Getting the, the actual medal itself. How special is that? Oh, it's extremely special. You know, I didn't get to hear my national anthem. Haven't heard it yet on the award stage, but um, looking forward to hopefully hearing it on 2018. But, you know, just to be up there and to have your flag raised and this time to be up there with two of my teammates in the USA three sled who won bronze, um, it, it's an incredible feeling and it's such an honor. Now, you're just coming back from getting a proclamation from Governor Deal. Is that right? Yeah, it was a pretty big moment. Uh, get proclamations over at uh, the state capitol. So it was a fun day. Wow, that's cool. Do you have a key yet to the city? I mean, what else is in store for you? I mean, you're getting everything. This is great. I did. I got the key to the city of Douglasville. So uh, if anybody needs anything, I guess we're opening <laughs> doors. <laughs> that's cool. See, this is what I'm talking about. When you come back, this is what it should be like. Cars, homes. You got any of that? No, no, no homes. <laughs> uh, awards, keys. These are the kind of things you should be getting. All right, Elena. Uh, Alana, we're going to do a special game with you here on Game Time. We do this periodically with special guests, and we're certainly honored that you are here and spent some time with us today. Um, but we want to uh, play a little game. Are you, are you cool with that? All right, let's do it. All right, Mark Owens mm-hmm. is going to play a little game between one former great – in the National Football League, and a current former great Olympian, all right, between you guys. Let's play this game. Now, Lonnie, you need to understand that we play these little stupid trivia games all the time, and Cordell has won two in a row. Don't ask me So, how. so ask he me. thinks he's the gold medal champion <laughs> of game time what trivia. What do you guys want from me? So we'll figure we'll put a couple of champions against each other. But you know something, Lonnie? You are the second best in the world in bobsled. By what? Less than a second. Yep, the second, second best in the yeah. world. So today's quiz... Is all about number two. All about number two. Five okay. questions for each of you, okay? All right. all right. Whoever gets the most right, you each get a lifeline, and that lifeline is Carl Dukes, and you can use him once at any time you want. Just once. Just once. He may all right? be biased. Can we have another person here? I would here? not be biased. <laughs> Cordell, I would help you. I know she's I wanna, a guest. I don't I want to. I want you to. I want to beat your streak. I want to beat you. So I'm gonna help. that's my point. And if you don't help the uh, Olympic gold, uh, uh, silver medalist, then you're un-American, Carl. Just yeah. telling you that. All right, Cordell. <laughs> Cordell, we're gonna go first with you. Five go questions, ahead. all ahead. about the number two. Go ahead, Cordell. The Mash finale was the most watched <laughs> TV show of all time. <laughs> What was the second most watch? And we do have multiple choice. Go ahead. Was it Roots, the Dallas finale, or Super Bowl XX back in 1986? Why has it got to be Roots? Go ahead. Go ahead. The Dallas? Dallas, Roots, or Super Bowl XX? What was the year? I would say Dallas. 1986. I would say Dallas. Dallas? Yes. Absolutely correct. Well done. Wow. Yeah. Roots was actually number three. Yeah. Really? It was number three, yeah. In 86? Uh, No, no, no. No, the Super Bowl twenty back in nineteen eighty six. Oh, okay, gotcha. All right, question number question number two for Cordell. Okay. Who faced off in Super Bowl two, January fourteenth, nineteen sixty eight? No multiple choice on this one. Who faced off in Super Bowl two back in January fourteenth, nineteen sixty eight? Can I give him one? Can you give him one? You want to tell me? Yeah, like half half, half of the, that. Yeah, Green Bay. Well, then he get. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I guess you already did. So you have half a lifeline left. All right, now I need my half of lifeline. Can you get the rest of it? <laughs> Go ahead, Carl Dukes. All right, so I mean, you're using the full lifeline. No, full I, lifeline. I told him. I no, said no, Green you Bay. Said you gave me half. You gave, you me, gave half. me Green Bay. I want mm-hmm. the other half. I Go ahead. I, I, so Green Bay is one. That is half. I know. Lana, you want to take a chance on that one? Oh, no clue. So I got half of that number. Pretty, pretty rowdy it. fan base. You know this. Jets? No. That's incorrect. The, Green Bay the Giants. and Giants? Oakland. Oh, oh, Raiders. Oh, Green Bay and Oakland, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you still got one. All right, question number three. Question uh, number three, Cordell Stewart. All about number two, yeah. since we have a Olympic silver medalist in yes. studio with us. Yes, yes. The Falcons went 4-12 in 2013. Against two was their second win of the season. <laughs> oh, this guy here. Falcons went 4-12 Multiple in choice? 2013. Well, you got one of four. Can I look at my... <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't go to the computer either. Leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> the second... The second win of the season was against two. It was back in October. NFC? AFC? NFC? Uh, can I get that? Can I get that multiple choice? NFC? AFC? Can I get that? NFC? NFC. 
Uh, Ten seconds. Tampa? Tampa? Absolutely correct. Well done. Wow. Nice job, Tim. 23 31. 23 31. Wow. Now you got two I right, two to go. <laughs> <laughs> you better get that right. All right. Uh, this one's a little tough, so it is multiple choice. Cordell Stewart. What team had the second selection in the 2013 NFL draft? Oh, it. Was it the Chief, the Jags, or the Dolphins? What team had the second selection in the 2013 NFL draft? The second? The second selection. And you said the Jags or the Dolphins? The Chiefs, right? Jags, or Dolphins. Who do you think? Dolphins? Dolphins. That is incorrect. Be the Jaguars. Jags. Jaguars. Ugh. Chiefs, Jags, Dolphins. All right. So I got two of five. Last question. Last, Last question. One, one more. Three. All Come right. On. What former Atlanta athlete wore the number two while he played here? Hello. What, what former Atlanta athlete played wore the number two? Can I go while to the lifeline? Pl- no, you've already, already used it. Me. It's multiple choice. I multiple go ahead. choice. Was it Keith Brooking, Joe Johnson, or Ilya Kovalchuk? You say Joe Johnson. Mm-hmm. Say it again. Ask the question one more time. What former Atlanta athlete? Atlanta. Wore the number two while playing here. Was it Keith Brooking, Joe Johnson, or Ilya Kovachuk? Need an answer. The first one. First one? Yeah. Keith Brooking yeah. is incorrect. Well, now, Johnson? wait a minute. Which position did Keith Brooking play? I have no idea. He played linebacker. linebacker. He wouldn't have the number two. He was number 56. <laughs> Ilya Kovachuk was number 17. Played for the Thrashers. Joe Johnson, Joe Johnson number two. All right, you got two right. All yeah, right. Alana. <laughs> Here we go. It's all about number two. <laughs> this is his game, get, not mine. Get three right, <laughs> right, and you've won the game. That's a lot. Avatar is the number one grossing movie of all time. What is number two? Is it Titanic, The Avengers, or The Dark Knight? Titanic. Titanic, absolutely correct. Yeah. Good job, yeah. yeah. Janet Woo! Jackson is the youngest Jackson kid. Who's the second youngest? Latoya. J- Janet is the second young, or is the youngest. Oh, Who's the, youngest. the second? Is it Michael, Latoya, or Randy? Oh. Can... Randy throws a loop in there. But I think it's Latoya. You think it's Latoya? Yeah. Randy's old as hell, isn't he? Randy's the oldest. It is Randy. It is oh. Randy, yep. It goes uh, Rebby, Jackie, Tito, Jermaine, LaToya, Marlon, Brandon, Michael, Randy, wow. then Janet. Wow. All right, that's I, right. And I would have said Michael, so I'm glad you yeah. didn't come to me. All right, here we go. Next one. Need to get these last three right to win the game. In the song, The 12 Days of Christmas, on day two, what did your true love bring you? Oh. And everybody's singing it right now. <laughs> And the 12 days of Christmas, what did your true love bring you on day two? Two turtle doves. Two turtle doves is absolutely correct. Yeah, nice job. I love them. All right, we're all tied up. Get, get this one right and you win the game. Get this Can't one right it. and you win the game. Gotta go into a tie. Game. Tiebreaker here. Hold Let's on. Go. Give me that medal so I can put it on you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, do our own, we'll do our own little Olympic ceremony or podium. All right, final question. Get this one right and you are the Olympic champion of stupid game time trivia. Here we go. Kroger. Is the number two employer in this city just west of downtown Atlanta? Kroger is the number two employer in this city just west of downtown Atlanta. Oh, there's no multiple choice? There's there? no multiple right. choice. Uh, <laughs> can you I can use a lifeline? You can use a lifeline. You had better get this one right. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold yeah. on. Repeat the, the question. question on you. you Kroger you <laughs> is the number two Don't employer you say word, Trish. in this city Look away. just west of downtown Atlanta. Look that way. How Look that know? way. What's west got to do with anything? I'm trying to help her out a little bit. Oh. Trish, you got to sit Check still. your key you ring. What do you have much. on there? If he gets it right, it's wrong. Uh, if he gets it right, it's wrong. Oh, goodness. What I'm do you have at on Trish. your key ring? Are you asking me the set? Where's my the no- Co- Kroger is the number Co- two employer. Wait, hold no, on. It's, it's hey, not, you know no. what? It's open. What is the Time city? Is Name the city <laughs> where Kroger <laughs> employs a lot of people west of <laughs> downtown Atlanta. Atlanta. It's over. He didn't get it. It's got to be uh, It's got to be Douglasville. Then. Absolutely it's correct. Done. We have a winner. Yeah. Yeah. All these chances you guys are giving oh, her. God. Only first place can talk. Cordell, sh- I check your key Woo! ring because you got a key to the city. Ah. Congratulations. Thank you. You know what? Thanks. Alan, I tell you what, you did a phenomenal job. It's just unfortunate this guy is still down to nothing. I am, no. I am down. <laughs> I'm going to beat him one day, though. All right? Hey, thank you for stopping by. Yes. Congratulations on all your success. Thank you for letting me hold That's a winner. the silver and bronze medal because that's as close as hey, I'm ever going to come. And by the way, since you're endorsed by Polo, we need to talk about some things before you leave it because I am a Ralph Lauren fan. You yes. see where is it? You see where he's at? He got you. you see where he's at? Yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. Get in the game on Twitter at 92.9 The Game. On Facebook slash 92.9 The Game. 
on YouTube slash 929 The Game. On your phone, the free audio roadshow app. The website, 929thegame.com. Watch the game. Watch 929thegame.com. And listen at 929thegame.com. Sports Radio, 929 The Game.